I want to talk about how we use 50mm lenses in street photography. If you've got a compact camera, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, you've likely got a 50mm lens somewhere in there. It's often the second lens you get after the kit lens on a DSLR or mirrorless camera. And there's a good reason for that. Often it's the first lens you're using that gets you down to an aperture of 1.8, which then opens up different creative possibilities for shallow depth of field and manual focusing in both photo and video. But I find in street photography, I use my 50mm in kind of a predictable way. It's often finding a close bit of foreground, dropping the f-stop, and then getting some nice shallow depth of field. I wanted to explore in this video three different methods to use your 50mm creatively in street photography. Really quick update before we get into this video, I have just launched a Discord server. I've been having a lot of interesting conversations in the comments of my videos and seeing other people having similar conversations. So I wanted to create a home for people to talk about street photography, gear, lighting, all sorts of stuff. So I'll link that in the description and pinned comment below this video. For our first method of 50mm street photography, we're gonna get high. And there's gonna be two ways to do that. One, you can spark up a doobie. Number two, you can get up to a high vantage point in order to get a downwards angle on the world around you. We're going to be going with the second one because this is a photography video. Now you could find a high up angle like I did using a multi-story car park if you're in a city, or if not, you could try going up a fire escape if you can get access to one, any sort of exterior staircase, maybe even just a high up window from an office building or a shopping center. Try thinking about the area that you're photographing in and where you might find a high up angle. But why would we want to use a high up angle? Well, when we're on ground level and we're looking at everyone around us, we have that very particular field of view. We're looking at pretty much shoulder height, like eye height with all the people around us. And sometimes we'll even put our cameras down close to the ground and try and get that upwards angle. But when you go high up, it's a completely different field of view. From the multi-story car park that I went to, I found a couple of different people around, but also in between taking photos, I just sort of enjoyed paying attention to the world in that way. There was lots of people going about their day, having like their own little, you know, main character missions for the day. So it's interesting to sort of look at the world from that perspective, especially like with a photographic eye. If you find a good high angle position around where you live, try go back there at different times of the day. So say in sunrise, midday, sunset, because you might find that the hard light from the sun creates really nice shapes on the street when you look at it from that downward angle. Our second method is going to be looking for overlapping lines. So overlapping lines could be built up of anything and they could be in any angle. So if we're looking dead ahead of us, it might be some overlapping staircases outside of a shopping center. If we're looking upwards, it could be things like telephone lines. But in my case, I was actually looking downwards off of a suspension bridge. So you have those cables from the suspension bridge and then the Manchester tram lines. And the reason why a 50 mil or even a longer lens is really good in this situation is because that little bit of compression that the lens offers brings together a lot of those lines in order to create abstract shapes and also allow us to create frames within frames in order to frame our subjects in the... In the <laughs> How many times can I say frame? But it creates frames within frames in order to frame our subjects. So it's a very interesting way to look at the world. And if you find a couple of good spots with overlapping lines in your area, I think it could be quite a good spot to revisit depending on where the light is at different times of the day. And our third method for using the 50 mm lens is gonna be finding a surface and creating depth. Now, you're probably familiar with this in a couple of ways. One you see quite a lot is people looking at puddles and creating reflections with the camera low to the ground. That is obviously a really good way to be able to create depth using the ground as foreground in the bottom half of your frame and then framing a subject up ahead. When I was out, there wasn't really that much rain and I forgot my water bottle to just create a puddle. But you can also do this against a vertical surface like a window. Any sort of large glass window where you can use it to create that doubling up effect. And I find once you get one satisfying photo with a surface, so even if you're using a surface that is the ground or up against a glass window, once you start to notice them, you notice them in lots of other places that you might have been before, I never thought about using that in a photographic way. Out of all these methods that I tried, I think the one that surprised me most with the results after going out and intentionally trying them was the getting high. Because once you're up at that high angle, it's a very different pace because you're not 
looking for someone moving too quickly or anything like that. You're looking down and it's kind of a total anonymity to everyone that you're shooting. And it sort of lets you look at the world in a much more, I guess, just zoomed out way because you're so far away. So you start looking at shapes in a much larger scale. So rather than using, say, a door frame and a person or a lamppost and a person or several people close together on the ground, you're looking at entire streets, phone lines, trees and groups of people to create completely different shapes compared to what you would use when you're shooting from a ground level. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other methods of using a 50mm lens for street photography that you think are worth looking at. Thank you very much for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.